Hey everybody, I'm back with part two of percentages. So of course the first video, I feel like it was a little long winded, but percentages are like a really big topic and there are tons of word problems, which I know you guys all love. Just kidding, right? <laughs> I know you guys really hate word problems. So I'm back with part two and we're going to be looking at percent markups and markdowns, which of course is very similar to percentage increase and decrease. Very simple topic. And then we're going to get into percent proportions, which is a really big thing because they can give it to you very cut and dry or they can give it to you in word problem form. And this is a topic that people have like a really, really, really hard time with. So I'm super excited to be able to be here and clarify. Of course, if you are having any problems or any questions as I'm going through, feel free to drop a comment. Um, all of the examples are coming from, from the book. So of course, I don't actually write the word problems out, but if you would like to, as you're going through the videos, just press and pause so that you can write them out and have them as a reference. So that it helps you um helps you as you're studying all right so let's go ahead and get started all right so percent markups and markdowns so you know how you go to a store right and prices have been marked down just kind of like a discount um you may have something that was originally twenty dollars has been marked down to fifteen dollars so these types of questions they're going to be asking you to find a percentage of that markdown um normally when we talk about marking up prices this is normally from the point of view of like a buyer so for example like i have my own women's boutique so when i buy clothes at a wholesale price i have to mark them up a certain percentage um before i add them to the store so that's what a percent markup is going to come at and then we're going to go ahead and look at two different examples to get you guys in the loop about what I'm talking about. So it says Jasmine, and by the way, this is our ninth example from percentages just to confuse you guys. So we did eight different examples for our first video. And then for this video, we have nine, two, four, five, six, seven more examples. Yeah, so all together it was 15 examples. Ooh. All right, so it says Jasmine purchased some dresses for $25 each wholesale. So her purchase price, oh Lord, her purchase price was $25. It says if she marks up the price by 65%, what will be her selling price? So basically what it's saying is Jasmine purchased these dresses for $25, right? And before she puts them in her store, she wants to mark them up 65%. So we need to know, okay, well, how much is she actually going to sell these dresses for? So, of course, we know what I tell you guys. Anytime we're dealing with word problems and percentages, right? Your percentages always have to be converted to what? They have to be converted to decimals because you cannot do any actual math, I mean, except for addition, with percentages without converting them first. And, of course, excuse me, that just happened. Butterfinger. Um, of course... That goes back to our sub skill converting percent to decimal. Anytime you want to convert percent to a decimal, you want to move the decimal two places to the left. And because we're dealing with a whole number, we automatically put the decimal at the end. So that becomes 0.65. All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to take this decimal and we're going to multiply it times our original selling price. So we're going to do $25 times the 65% markup, which would give us $16.25. All right, so that's going to tell us the actual markup price. Now, if we want to know what the selling price is, we're going to take this markup price and the original price, and we're going to add them together. which would give us 41.25. So just to go through the problem one more time, it says Jasmine purchased sundresses for $25 each wholesale. If she marks up the price by 65%, what is the new selling price? So in this sense, we're trying to figure out, okay, she wants to mark her original price up from $25 by 65%. So what we always have to do in dealing with percents and word problems is you have to convert your percent to a decimal. So we convert it to 0.65. 
Then you're going to multiply this times her purchasing price, which gave us $16.25. This was how much she was going to mark it up by, but they want to know what will her actual selling price be, including this markup. So we added them together, and we got $41.25. So percent markup and markdown, that isn't a really big topic. I mean, maybe you'll see it, maybe you won't see it not something that I would consider to be super important for the test but again I want to expose you guys to all the possibilities that you could get so that it will put you in a good shape all right so our next example says the normal price of denim jeans and house of JYL is $40 so we're gonna say normal price my ears are ringing Same bell. is $40 it says, but the price has been marked down by 30%. So what is the new selling price? So essentially, we have a store, right? Originally, jeans were $40, and they have been marked down 30%. So what's the new price? Just like a discount, basically. So first things first, when we're dealing with percentages, of course, we have to convert it to a what? To a decimal. So we know that 30% is going to be converted to 0.3. All right. And then we're going to multiply our two values together. So we're going to do the $40 times the 0.3, which gives us $12. Now, the difference between a percent markup and a percent mark down it of course is an up and a down and because it's, it's, this is a percent mark down that's money we're taking off which means we're going to subtract when we did our mark up we had to add because that was money we were adding so we're going to take our original value which is 40 i'm going to subtract the 12 dollars which is going to give us 28 dollars and that's going to be the new price So one more time just to walk you guys through the problem so that we can make sure we're all on the same page. It says the normal price of denim jeans in House of JYL is $40, but the price has been marked down 30%. So what's the new selling price? So of course, in dealing with percentages, we want to convert it to a decimal. We got 0.3. We multiply that times our original value, which gave us $12. And this is telling us how much they're actually taking off. But we want to know what the new selling price is so that we have to, so we subtract it and we'll get $28. Just like calculating your discount. Same thing, so you always wanna make sure you relate the values so that you can make them interchangeable so that you don't overthink it. So percent marked down is just like a discount. How much are you gonna pay? Okay. And of course, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to comment and let me know. All of your feedback is greatly appreciated. I'm gearing up for my official YouTube video, so I want to make sure they are perfect. So I get all thumbs up um, before I post them. So this is definitely a place to where I want you guys to be super honest, super open. If there's anything that I missed or that I didn't include, please let me know. And of course, I'll make a video that corresponds to that just to get you in the group, right? All right, so percent proportion. Percent proportions. Oh, let me get my other marker. Just drop. Percent proportions are a really big thing. They're like super common. So you know you have questions like um, 15 is 20% of what number? Or 15 is, I don't know. I can't think of any right now. I just drew a blade real quick. 15, 15 is 60% of, oh, I just said that one. Don't mind me. <laughs> okay. So basically this is when we're dealing with amounts, holes, and percents, or is over a uh, P over 100. It's a couple different ways. Um, that it could be broken down to you. So I'm going to show you guys a problem and break it down in terms of how to identify everything and then we'll go into our examples, okay? So the example problem says that 15 is 60% of 25. I 
I can't wait to have these live videos and like one day it'll be like hundreds and thousands of people watching. I'm probably gonna be super geek. Like, oh my god, they're really watching me. That's gonna be like super neat. I know I'm just starting out. So I know everything has to start somewhere and then eventually it grows, but that's really gonna bug me out. Like so many people, like thousands of views on YouTube and stuff. It's really gonna freak me out. So I would like to thank all of you guys who are taking the time now to get with me while I'm just starting out. Well, just starting out on social media and stuff because I've been doing this for years. For years and years and years. I have like All right, so let's get into this precious talk level. All right, this one says 15 is 60% 60 of 25. So, of course, we didn't have to solve anything. This was just an example so I can break down how you identify different parts of the problem and the actual setup that you use each time so that it's easier for you. So, when we look at our setup, it says amount over whole equals percent over 100. So first things first, with this setup, the 100 is a given, it's gonna be in every single problem. Sometimes people say, oh, well, I don't know when and when not to use it. It's always gonna be there, okay? And the reason why they put a 100 here is because that's how you convert your percent to a fraction um, instead of having to go through the motions and do it yourself. It's, it's an automatic given, all right? And in parentheses, we have is over of, and of course we have the percentage. So anytime I see a percentage in a problem, I know that automatically goes over 100 when we're dealing with this type of problem, okay? Um, we talk about fractions. When we say amount and a whole, whole is always going to be the total of what we're dealing with, and that's definitely going to come into play when we are doing our word problems. Amount is going to be a piece of something. So if I have a total team of 25 players, I know that automatically goes in the denominator. Because however many players that's specified in that problem is going to go on top, which is, which is a piece of it. And is over of, so these are um, shortcuts that people take sometimes. Whatever comes before the word is goes on top. Whatever comes after the word of goes on the bottom. Um, sometimes that is a good thing to go by and sometimes it's not. Um, I prefer for people to go by the amount over the whole just so that you get in a groove. But sometimes it will be really cut and dry to where whatever comes before is is on top. Whatever comes after of is on the bottom. Whatever has a percentage sign goes up 100 and you just go from there. So if we had to set this particular problem up, it would be 15 over 25. is equal to 60 over 100. All right, so you do 15, which is our amount, which comes before the word is. 25 is our whole, which comes after the word of. 60 is our percentage, and when you place it over 100, it automatically gets rid of the percent sign, okay? Make sure you guys get rid of that. You don't have to convert that to a decimal. You leave it exactly as it is, okay? All right, in order to know if you've done it correctly, we would have to cross multiply. This is a skill that we had in, what do we do this in? Ratios and proportions, actually. Um, so cross multiplying means that you just multiply from top to bottom on both sides to make sure that it's equal. So in this case, we did 15 times 100, and we want to see if that's equal to 25 times 60. So 15 times 100, of course, is 1,500. And um, if we do 25 times 60, that's 1,500. And you gotta see when we do examples and stuff, how it actually comes out to play. But this particular setup right here, you guys need to know, love, and memorize, okay? Um, a really good tip that I always have for people when in terms of memorizing is that in every problem, if you write this setup out, it'll be so much easier for you to memorize. People will skip that and they will just try to automatically plug it in without understanding, not retaining what goes on top, what goes on the bottom. And things of that nature all right so let's get into some of these good word problems so the first couple that i'm going to do are going to be very cut and dry very pull the information out plug it in and solve the second part will be more word problems where they put you in certain scenarios and you have to be able to recognize what to pull out and how to solve it so the first example says what is 25 percent of one 
All right, so if I do my setup, I know I'm doing my amount over my hole is equal to percent over 100. And of course I can do my parentheses, which is my if over my of and my percentages. All right, and if you write this every time you do it, you won't get confused. That's, that's the thing is that people try to take so many shortcuts when it comes to the math, and that's what kills your retention is because you're not doing things consistently. You're not setting it up the same exact way. But if you put yourself in a space to where you're doing it exactly the same every single time, the chances of you getting it wrong will be very slim. All right, so first things first, it says, what is 25% of 150? So I know with my percentage sign, I see this 25, so I know this automatically goes over 100. I see the word of, and 150 comes after it, so I know that's going to be my hole is going to go in the bottom. And with these questions, they're always going to give you two values, and you're going to be looking for a third, because the 100 is always given. You're always going to have that. So we're going to have 150 is equal to 25 over 100, right? And we're trying to figure out what our amount is. So again, this goes right back, just like how we saw proportions, just like how we saw ratios. You see why I always connect the topics based on how similar they are? Because when you do the book in the order that I put it in, you've been practicing the same setup, the same topic so consistently, and you'll realize how seamless it is. So ratios, proportions, and percentages are interchangeable, meaning that the way in which we solve them and set them up is so similar that it's so much easier for you to be able to retain, okay? All right, and of course from here, we know we multiply top to bottom, and then we always divide by what's left over, so we're doing 25 times 150, and then we'll end up dividing by 100. Yeah, we'll tell us I missed the answer. So if we do 25 times 150, that gives us 3,750. And if we divide that by 100, that gives us 37.5. Ah, why did this do that? All right, and when you get your answer, I always recommend that you go back and fill it in so that you can check it, so that we can make sure we're doing everything correctly. All right, so just to go back to our problem, it says, what is 200, oh shoot, what is 25% of 150? I know that 25%, my percents always go over 100, so I'll plug it in there. Because 150 comes after the word of, I know that's my whole, so that goes to the bottom, which means we're searching for the amount. So we do our setup. You always multiply top to bottom and you divide by whatever number is um, left over. And when I say top to bottom, it's just diagonally. So we did 25 times 150, we got 3,750. And we divided by 100 and we got 37.5. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take 37.5 and we're gonna plug it back in here so that we can make sure that our answer is correct. And you always wanna do that because it's so simple. It's so easy to make a mistake and you don't wanna get yourself in a boat to where you're like super frustrated. Another thing I want to point out too is as you guys can see, you see how I'm stacking all of my work doing it one on top of another. In the event that you may make a mistake, it's so much easier to go back and look, okay, I did this first, plug it in, multiply it, then divide it to figure out what your mistake was versus your work being everywhere and it kind of frustrates you. Okay? So we're doing 37.5 over 150 is equal to 25 over 100. All right, so in this particular scenario right here, what we're gonna do is you just multiply top to bottom on both sides, and both sides should come out equal. This is exactly what we did when we did identifying equivalent ratios to see which sides came out equal. So see, as you build and strengthen those skills, by the time you get to the percentage problems, you definitely should not have a problem. And that is the gist of the clustering everything together so that you can strengthen the skills as you go, as you build, as you build, as you build, so that the particular topics are really easy for you. And of course, they both came out to 3,750, which means that my answer is correct. All right? And we're going to go ahead and move to another example. And if you're just tuning in right now, we are doing percent proportions 
Um, but I definitely recommend that as you guys see me writing the formula out every time, you definitely want to get in the groove of writing that formula as well so that you can memorize it, of course, because they're not going to give it to you. All right, so the next example says 10 is what percent of 50? All right, so we're going to go ahead and write our formula out because you have to know it, love it, memorize it. So it's going to be our amount over our whole is equal to our percent over 100. And of course, I do my other symbol in parentheses. So is over of you know, percent. All right, so let's go back and look at what they gave us. All right, so 10 comes before the word is. So that's my first one. And then 50 comes after of. So I know that they're going to be plugged in here, which means I'm searching for my percentage. So let's plug it in so we can see where we are. And of course, if you guys have any questions as I'm doing this, feel free to let me know. So we're doing 10 over 50 is equal to blank over 100. All right, and of course, we always know we multiply diagonally and we divide by what is left over. So I'm going to do 10 times 100, and then we're going to divide it by 50. And this is the same skill that we use in solving for ratios, the missing value, the same skill we use in solving proportions. And if you guys missed those videos, you can definitely go check them out. Um, I did them yesterday, and they are pinned to the announcement. All right, and then we do 1,000 divided by 50, which gives us 20. And of course, they're asking for percentages, so the answer is 20%. All right, so just to go back to our original question, it says 10 is what percent of 50? So of course, I always do my setup first because you guys have to memorize this. Remember, 100 is a given, so you gotta use it every time in this particular setup. So amount over whole or is over of is equal to percent over 100. Because 10 came before the word is, I know that's my amount, it goes on top. Because 50 came after the word of, that's my whole, it goes on the bottom. So just plug everything in. Once you get your setup here, you always cross multiply your two values. Of course, we can never cross multiply this because we don't know what it is. So do 10 times 100 will give us 1,000. You always divide by what's left over, which is 50, and it gave us 20%. Now, of course, I always recommend that we go back and plug it in so we can make sure that our answer is correctly correctly make sure our answer is correct <laughs> goodness all right so i'm gonna do 10 over 50 is equal to 20 over 100 all right we're gonna cross multiply top to bottom so we're gonna do 10 one color i'm gonna do 10 times 100 is equal to 20 times 50, and of course those both give us 1,000. So that means that my answer is correct. Checking your answers is very important. If you guys are in the scenario and you can check your answers, which uh, we always would have, definitely go ahead and do it. So what I did was I took the 20 that we saw for, and I plugged it in for my missing value. I cross multiplied top to bottom on both sides. So I did 10 times 100 and 20 times 50, and they both gave me 1,000. So of course, if both sides are equal, that means the answer is correct. And get that. Okay. All right, and of course, if you guys have any questions as I'm doing this, um, I did see for a lot of um the answers in terms of what you guys are having trouble with um in terms of math, a lot of people have problems, have issues with percentages and word problems as well. So make sure if you're one of those people, you're tuning in. All right, let's go to our next example. So it says 24 is 60 percent of what number one second all right so of course we're going to do our setup which is our amount over the whole is equal to our percent over 100 and then in parentheses of course we have our is 
cover up and that's the finish all right so this says 24 is so i know that 24 is my amount because it comes before the word is 60 has a percentage sign so i know that that goes here which means we're looking for our hole so we're going to plug those in and we're going to do 24 on top and then 60 on the top over here and 100 on the bottom here so we know that from here our next step is going to be to cross multiply diagonally and then we always divide by whatever number is left over so we're going to do 24 times 100 which gives us 2400 and then we're going to divide by 60, which should give us 40, I believe. Yep, which should give us 40. All right, so back to the top. It says 24 is 60% of what number? So because 24 comes before the word is, that's going to be our amount. 60 is connected to the percent, so that goes over 100. So we plug it in. We have 24, of course, we're looking for the whole and 60 over 100, so we cross multiply top to bottom, 24 times 100, which gave us 2,400. We divided by 60 and it gave us 40. And of course, I always recommend you go back and do what? You go back and you plug in your answer so you can make sure that you got it correctly. So, that you completed it. I don't know if she's saying got it correctly. <laughs> We're gonna do 24 over 40 is equal to 60 over 100. I probably should've wrote it in a different place. So you can see. All right, and we cross multiply. So we're doing 24 times 100, and we're doing 40 times 60, which should give us 2400 on both sides, which means that my answer is correct. All right, and we just go from there. All right, so as you guys can see, the percent proportion aren't that bad. As long as you memorize the setup, then you definitely should be in a good place. As long as you practice enough and you create those triggers, then you should definitely be fine with this particular topic. And you can just go from there. So now I'm going to get into some word problems that, that do deal with percent proportions. <clears throat> For those of you who have a really tough time kind of seeing the difference between the two and combining those topics. Okay, wait, so I'm actually going to pause because my phone is dying, unfortunately. I'm going to let it charge for a little bit and I'll go back into the word problems with the percent proportion. Then we'll go ahead and we'll look at some of the questions for a diagnostic. Okay, thank you guys.